to be number nine. All right. Well, all right, boxes to builds, number nine. Let's see what's in the box. Okay. <laughs> So, Box of Bills number nine. It is from Tipton, Missouri. Tipton, Missouri. Let's see what's in the box from Tipton, Missouri. Oh, it's a box within a box. So this ought to be interesting. We'll get it out and then we'll take a look at what we're doing. Oh, this is a familiar brand that's on, been on the Golf Channel. Huh, let's see what we got. All right, PXG, it looks like a brand new box. And it is a brand new box. You've never played like this before. Okay, so here we go. Ooh, there's a whole thing in here. Okay, so it looks like uh, our golfer from Tipton wants the clubs cut to standard, 38 on the 38, 6, 37 and a half. Uh, Dwight, that's about a half of an inch over, I think, but we'll take a look. Reinstall the grips if possible, swing weight to D0, uh, and close... The, and pitching wedge. Oh, there's an, another club in here. And make those D2. I can set the loft and lie of a Mitchell machine. Love the show. All right. And he wasn't real happy with the build quality. Uh oh. Well, let's see what we got. Well, the first unique thing is that they've got Acra. Typically, you don't see Acra and PXG because unless they've got an independent club maker. So we got Acra 60s, those run in that soft R range with the typical rubber grips from Lampkin. And these appear to be the new 211s. The new 211s, this is the gap wedge. Let's see what else we got. After a little bit of rereading on there, they want he said that the five iron would be at 38, six at 37 and a half, and so on. And he apparently doesn't like the way they came out. So this box of the bill is going to be on blueprinting. Blueprinting. So let's put that up there. Blueprint. So what's blueprinting, right? They uh, honestly, we do a lot of blueprinting. The blueprinting is basically taking specs of the current equipment. Now we do that during fittings. It's a kind of a junior version of blueprinting, but it's to see what, like the right length, the lofts, the lies, total weights, swing weights, flexes, that all these different things that make up the golf club. And if you really, really want to get technical and you had the equipment to do it, you could measure bounce, you could measure offset, you can measure the length of the blade. I mean, there's all kinds, of, it just depends on how really detailed you want to get in order to be able to totally blueprint the club. Now, during, now it could be said that during an assembly phase and the way that most guys would do it, hopefully, that even the way we do it, when you measure the heads, measure the ferrules, measure the shafts, measure the grips, all these different things in order to your, you're doing a, a blueprinting of sorts in order to ensure your build quality is going to be high. And it also lets you know what you have to do, uh, you know, by adding weights, if you're gonna have to bend, what you have trimming, all those kinds of things that come into play during a build. So apparently we are shooting for a D0 in the everything down to the wedges and a D2 for the gap wedge and the pitching wedge. So now 
let's get over this here in a little bit. And so I'm going to redo these, right? So we're going to take all these things apart from the grip all the way down to the head. We're going to take them all off because he apparently likes these grips. Okay, no problem. Now, when we talk about regular clubs and we're talking about a swing weight, when we do this, it's all based, it's all geared on like a 120 gram shaft. Okay. 120 gram shaft. Now, if the head is a standard weight and the grip is a standard weight, you're talking somewhere around D2 to D4, depending on the maker, right? D2 to D4. So if you drop 60 grams, 60 grams out of this, and you figure nine grams, right, uh, for swing weight purposes for the shaft, so if you even said 10, let's just call it six, seven grams, or six, seven swing weight points. So in order to make that up in six or seven swing weight points, uh, you're going to have to add somewhere in the vicinity of, you know, 12 and 14 grams. And that's not going to get you there because they don't make a 12 and 14 gram. And why would you, right? Why would you? And, and in the past, <coughs> in the past, these guys used to have those, uh, you remember the, the set screws that went along the edge? And you could add weight that way. I thought that was kind of a unique, very cool kind of situation. Apparently, they did not like it, or it's sitting underneath this badge. One of the two. But the, the club, it does feel light. So we're going to see what that does. So again, what we've got to do is I'm going to measure these just to see, just to see what we had. And then uh, we'll start talking about pulling apart. So let's go to the bench. All right. First thing we're going to do is kind of a, a loft set up here. And I've got my, I don't know if you can see it right there or not. I've got my initial build sheet. Look at all these torque wrenches. That was from that other video. All right, so we're going to start with a six. I'm going to give it a good measure. Let's see what we got. All righty, so the six iron is a half of an inch over. All right, so starting out. It's 38, and let's see what we got for a swing weight. Looks like C7. Alrighty, and let's get a flex. Okay, so we're not going to do too much with the lofts and the lies here because he says he's got a Mitchell machine, so we're going to leave that one alone, but we might give it a check just to see. Now again, remember we talked about these. These take a bit of a special ferrule, and uh, I don't know if this is the way it was supposed to look. I mean, the, as far as the finishing was done, it, it was done well. I mean, it was nice and smooth. I'm just not sure if that was the kind of finish they were shooting for or not. All right, so let's, so we're going to look at all the rest of them and see what we ended up with. All right, so what did we find out when we, when we did our really minor blueprinting? We found out that the club lengths are a half an inch over. Now, why is that? Well, in OEM land, the easiest way to make up swing weight for a lighter shaft is to add length. And you will see specs in a lot of cases. They don't, 
not all of them do it as much as anymore, but in the past, you would have a certain spec for steel shafts, which were the heavier, you know, heavier shaft. And we'll just say 38 inches for a five iron. Okay. Now what you're seeing is a, when they went to graphite, they would add another half of an inch in order to obtain swing weight without having to add a whole bunch of weight and manipulate a lot of things. It was just easier manufacturing. Now what we're seeing is some companies will do it. Some companies won't. Now, and in particularly in distance clubs, you'll find out that the standard length actually gets up a half of an inch. I think that's cheating, okay, because if you're really truly at a distance club, you would have it at a standard length, which most people would be able to manipulate and, and be able to hit it further, and voila, you go. Now, in the beginning, you know, we're going to say early 2000s-ish, so that's almost 20 years ago, but in that when distance became all the rage in irons, that's what it was. They just took a five iron, stamped a six on it, moved on, and away you were. Now, with the way technology is, that you are getting actual standard six or seven iron lengths, right? Seven iron lengths, all right? <laughs> and, and it's working better. And we're hitting it further. We're hitting it straighter. We're hitting it higher. I mean, all these different things are coming out because of the newer technologies. So what we're going to have to do now, what, what scares me here is, and hopefully it didn't happen, that if we're, if we're going to cut off a half of an inch, because they're almost at D2 now, right? Or at D0. They're at D0. So a half an inch is how many swing weight points, boys and girls? Huh? Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. We'll find that out. Uh, answer in the show notes below. How much is a half of an inch in swing weight points? All right. Now, with that, because he wants D0, and we're already at D0, if he didn't put any tip weights in here, we're in pretty good shape. All right, we can make that happen. If he put tip weights in there in order to obtain that swing weight, uh, we could have problems, and I'm going to have to call him, and we're going to go from there. So, let's take apart some clubs. I'm really kind of interested. I might use this as an example for... Oh, he wants them back. I, I just now got my air machine, and I can try and blow off some grips. But I don't know if I want to do that on these guys because uh, I don't want to destroy them. <laughs> I just don't want to destroy them because uh, I got to get I got to get more time behind the gun. So let's blow off some grips. Let's take apart some clubs and see what we got. Traditional way of blowing off a grip is with a grip gun. Now this is obviously an older model. They have some that have a a plastic tube, right, that works, and so that you can sit this on the ground, you can squirt it. This one works for me. I've had it for, you know, it's one of those things you just get used to. So, uh, so what? this is a very, very sharp tip. It squirts like that through there. And what you want to do is you want to start from the back, aiming down the shaft in order for you to squirt this stuff down the shaft. Now, when you do this, you want to put your finger over the weep hole that's here in the back, so it creates that pressure with the water or with the solvent so that it can get around the tape that was on there in order to bust it loose and for us to slide it off. So in it goes, down its shaft it happens. You see how it just, hopefully you can see this, this thing is going to be soft. Just two or three and you don't want to pump it up to where it gets a big giant ball. You just kind of have to show some patience with it and let it find its way all the way to the bottom. There we go. And it squirts out. Then you got to kind of move a little quick. I like grabbing the head. And you see how it just busted loose right there? And you just pull it off and voila. There you go. Now we just need to get it dry. But so what we'll do is, is we will keep doing it and then we'll come back to this and take the tape off. Let's cut a couple more. I guess I should have said that we, uh, you needed to make sure that there wasn't anybody standing down the other end. <laughs>
Alrighty, to keep uh, the process going, we need the we need the butane torch, we need the knife, and we need to heat this up. Now this one's got a whole bunch of fluid on it, and hitting hitting something that's flammable with a lot of fluid is probably not the smartest idea in the world. So let's get rid of that. Now. Different kind of ferrules, right? I just happen to have a whole package of them right on the other side, so we should be in pretty good shape for that. So my my fear is is that with us making the making the the weight that the previous builder put weight here versus putting it behind here, and that's what we're going to find out next. So just like every other time, we got to get this thing hot. I put a little more time into this because this one's a little thicker, right? And now we got to be careful and lay the blade down and pull it out. There we go. Now get that out of the way and let's heat the head. See how I kept the heat moving and that was just to prevent doing a lot of premature burning or scarring of the, the metal, although you can take it off, but why do it if you don't have to? All right, let's get this head off of here. Voila. Now we gotta clean this thing out and let's find out if we had a tip. I'll be right back. All right, so what we, you saw, I had some ring around here from the heat, I got rid of it. Got the inside cleaned up and lucky for us, no weight, that's a good thing. Now we got to check, I want to check one more thing here. And we're going to clean this off and try and do another insertion. up here. All right, so I want to make sure it's going in all the way. There we go. So we went that far in there. Kind of a double check, make sure it's all the way into the bottom. And it is. So we have a 370 and a whatever, I'm, th I'm hoping these are 370. So that's good. So let's tear some more apart. I did all the specking or blueprinting of the heads, the shafts, and the grips. 
Grips are pretty consistent. They're within a gram of each other, not a problem. And the funny part is the the shaft and the grip almost weigh as the same. In fact, the shaft's a little bit lighter. Uh, huh. And that's just because we're trying to get into a a weight range that or a flex range that the golfer was looking for. So this is where it gets to be kind of interesting. You know, they the have these weights. Everybody is circling around a swing weight. they got to have this swing weight. Well, we can trick swing weight, right? We, we can do that all day long. I can make it feel like a sledgehammer, but why, right? Why? Now, there are certain swing styles that need something that's a little bit heavier so they can detect it when they're really fast and when they're really coming through. All right. Well, let's make that for them. Let's not try and trick a lightweight shaft to try and be something that's heavier. Play something heavier. Get something more flexible. That's the re that's where our problem comes into a lot of these cases. So I had to cut off somewhere between a half of an inch and five eighths of an inch in order to get to the length that the golfer wanted, which was standard, right? And this, what basically what happened was they made a half inch so they could get to the swing weight. Thankfully, there was no weight added in there so that we can add some stuff. However, we're talking about now. Remember when I asked you what it was, right? Now, if you're doing that and everything's still, your three swing weight points, however, uh, the heads are light, okay? The heads are light, and it actually, in this particular instance, it's more like four swing weight points. So that's about eight to 10 grams, all right? Eight to 10 grams. In fact, to get me where I needed to go, I needed to use a tip weight like this, and it's fairly big. And what I also did is I'm kind of tricking it. So here's another pro tip is that in order to get just a little bit more out of it, I put just a little scotia of lead tape around the actual tip itself in order to get where we needed to go. So this thing's gonna be massive. Matter of fact, yeah, it's just one more gram. So that's exactly where I was wanting to go. Uh, so that's what it is. So why did the top end one come in light and, and make the guy not like what he saw? is because it was very, very light. It was three or four grams lighter than, say, the spec would have. I don't know why that was, because the rest of them are in, right? At least for that. So you cut them light, you, you, you cut them down to normal, all of a sudden they're light and you have to add more weight. More weight, more weight, more weight. Now, so here's the next thing. Now that I have to add all this extra weight, what do I have to do to the shaft? There's two things I gotta do to the shaft. One, after I pull it apart, I want you guys to tell me down in the show notes. What is the one thing I got to do this shaft after I've pulled everything apart? What do I have to check? That's one. Number two is, what do I have to do to the shaft after I before I install this guy? And then put that down in the show notes and let me know. Tell me what you think. And when we get done, with, and we'll put the bill on, I'm going to put them back together. And then we'll, we'll talk about the specs again. And then we'll, I'll tell you what I did. So let me go put them together. And then we'll talk about what we did with the shaft. And then we'll talk, we'll finish up with blueprinting. So give me about 24 hours. So we're blueprinting, right? That was the whole idea of this whole thing. So what we had is the golfer got himself a set of irons and he checked the weights and he wasn't real happy with what was going on. Okay, so what happened was a couple of things. Number one, the six iron, which is the top of his set, was very, very light. The rest of them, the swing weights were as prescribed. However, when he went and checked for the length, the uh, the links were long, right? They were a half inch long. Now, as we've discussed before, in distance irons, that happens, right? They, they put that in there to get more distance. However, that was not the order from here. So he sends it to me and asks me if I can make them the, the same swing weight at, that, at the more standard length. And once we got them all apart, this was like an ultra blueprint. <laughs> Once we got them apart, we found that the head on the six iron was extraordinarily light. Now, when you're dealing with the lightweight shafts and you have a very light head, getting to a higher swing weight number is going to be really, really hard. Particularly if you, uh, uh, you know, you're looking for like a, a swing weight into the D range, right? and you're wanting a standard length and you're not doing anything extra to the club. It's gonna be light. 
So what I did was, is I put in a very large weight in order to get to where I needed to be. Now, uh, knowing full well that I wasn't going to make it because they just don't make a weight that big. And I even tricked it a little bit and I won't tell you what I did. Uh, <laughs> I called the golfer and told him, hey, I can get you what you want for all the clubs but one and it's just because it doesn't exist. And he was more than happy to hear that, that we had looked into it. So that's what we did. So we cut them all down to the standard length, standard playing length, and he says he's got a loft and lie machine in which he will adjust the lofts and lies. Otherwise, I would check those as part of the blueprinting. So blueprinting, length, loft, lie, flex, weights, total weight, swing weight. You know, you could you could do the offsets if you want in order to ensure the the golfers getting what they want or you're getting what you need. Right, a lot of that can be taken taken care of now to the next level is you pull them apart weigh all the heads weigh all the shafts weigh all the grips and then orient them the way that you want put them back together and re them just to make sure that's like an ultra version of it uh in a lot of cases i wouldn't recommend that particularly if they're already together unless there's a spec that you just have to have just like this golfer had to have with swing weight and so that's what we did. So I got them all back together. I got the grips back on. I wiped them off because they were all significantly dirty. Now they look pretty good, kind of that grayish black color. So that's what we've got, right? So that's blueprinting in a nutshell. So guys, if you got any questions, put them in the show notes. If you get something like this and you're trying it and you just get a little out of your depth, not a problem. Send us an email and we'll see what we can do to help you out. And because that's the whole idea, right? Is keeping golfers in golf longer and introducing you into a new hobby that, you know, it's fun, right? It's fun. And as always, guys, let's see your scores go low.